Okay, now this is a group of rather excellent analog multimeters. Uh, we have three Simpsons, a military PSM 37, and two British AVO meters. So a Simpson 270 Series 2, a Simpson 260 6 XLPM, and a Simpson 260 6 P. The XLPM and the 6 P are both uh, protected against overloads by uh, uh, relay protection circuits, uh, both driven off of 9 volt batteries, uh, the same battery that runs the R times 10K range. Uh, I was uh, in the process of taking some voltage readings and, and showing you those. Uh, that all got rather tedious and so what I thought I would do is uh, I, I just took individual readings on, on all the major ranges on, on, on each one and figured the uh, accuracy percentages uh, so that you wouldn't have to go through all of that. And, and we'll give you the results here in a moment. Now at first glance these meters uh, look very similar inside. And in fact they are very similar. They're both 20,000 ohms per volt. Um, the main differences are that the 270 has uh, uh, an additional uh, high voltage resistor for the 5,000 volt range whereas the uh, uh, the 6P uh, is limited to 1,000 volts. Uh, the uh, 270, like most of your old 260s, uh, uses four AA batteries for the uh, uh, R times 10,000 ohms range, and the uh, the 6P uses a 9 volt battery for that. I usually prefer AA batteries, but I'll tell you, in the case of a, a, a VOM like this, I'm going to go with the 9 volt battery, and the reason is because uh, when you're checking resistance and so forth, uh, you don't use the R times 10K range very often, and uh, uh, you're more likely to just forget the batteries are there and they're going to get all corroded. You see that on a lot of the old uh, Simpsons and so forth, at least with the uh, uh, the R times 1 range and the, the D cell that you use there, you have a reasonably good chance of, of catching a, a weak cell before it starts to corrode the, the inside of the meter. Uh, in the case of a 9 volt battery, uh, 9 volt batteries are double encased and they're much less likely to leak. And so um, you add that to the fact that the R times 10K range really isn't used all that much in consumer electronics. And I'm going to go with the 9 volt uh, model. That plus the uh, the, the protection function and uh, I think the uh, the 6P is the winner overall even though the uh, the 270 is the slightly more accurate meter uh, in terms of, of voltage readings. Okay and this is a uh, model 260 series 6 XLPM. Uh, this is a, a, a somewhat of a departure for Simpson. They got away from their old Bakelite uh, uh, traditional case. This is more of a uh, what's become conventional, uh, uh, ABS probably, uh, plastic, uh, it probably uh, is a little more impact resistant than the Bakelite. Um, you are limited to 5 amps DC. They've uh, included a couple extra ranges here. Got a 100 volt range and a 25 volt range. Um, you have a low power, a couple of low power uh, ohms settings and, and a separate off position on, on the selector there. Uh, and uh, uh, it's almost foolproof uh, on the protection circuit and it's just a good all-around multimeter. Okay and this is the uh, the inside of that 260 uh, 6XLPM. Okay we do have some somewhat mixed results here but the uh, uh, for, for daily purposes I think the 270-2 is the slight winner. Uh, there is about a 2% error on the 500 volt range, but if you remove that, uh, you have an average accuracy of 0.32%. Uh, that's more than good for an analog multimeter. In fact, uh, it's much better than most. Uh, second best meters uh, on the average, uh, the second best would probably be the uh, the AVO 8 Mark 5 with average accuracy all through the 300 volt range of 0.326%. Uh, um, once again, I think it's spec'd at 2%, uh, uh, but even if it was spec'd at 1%, it would beat that by a wide margin. The, uh, the 9 Mark 4 
its average accuracy is 0.76%, uh, not bad for a meter that was made in 1968. And by the way, these have no internal, ad internal adjustments that I'm aware of. Uh, they're all fixed resistors. The XLPM is an excellent meter. Its average accuracy through all of its ranges is 0.44%. What an amazing meter. It's just crazy accurate for an analog meter. The 6P, I was taking some readings on this the other day. I wasn't altogether satisfied with them, so I, I did make some adjustments. Uh, even still, its average in, for five ranges is 0.6%. Uh, that's okay. That's, uh, that's, that's quite good and, and certainly all you need for an analog multimeter. And the PSM 37 actually didn't come out being quite as accurate as I expected, but still its accuracy is 0.757%. Uh, uh, still an excellent meter overall. Uh, any one of these meters would, would serve your everyday purposes in, in a shop uh, and e exceed your, uh, your requirements by a wide margin. Okay, now on the subject of test probes, there are some people who's, who feel that uh, if you don't have shrouded probes, you're going to die. Well, what can I say? Uh, since at least the early 1950s, millions upon millions of pieces of consumer electronics have been repaired in a perfectly safe fashion using probes with standard banana plugs. I have no problem using those. In fact, every analog meter I have uses them, and most of them are not even adaptable to use the new shrouded plugs. I don't doubt that so somewhere along the way somebody sued somebody, and that's why we have the shrouded plugs. And really, I don't have any problem with them uh, for use with newer meters like flukes and like that, but if you want to use a good set of probes with an older analog multimeter, you're going to have to get a, a good set of probes and trim back the shrouding, and that doesn't bother me one little bit. That allows me to use a perfectly good set of high quality probes on an older analog multimeter uh, w without any problems whatsoever. Uh, I say that and I stand by it.